Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 108. Muppet Mansion and Real Lightsabers. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my loving and motherly co-host, Michelle Whalen. Aww. How are you doing today, dear? I'm doing okay. How are you? Doing well. So an early Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Um, we're actually recording quite a bit late this week off yeah. our new schedule. We're back on the weekend here, so it's it's Saturday we're, we're recording now. <laughs> right, where we haven't been doing that for, for a while now. Yeah, I got tied up at work uh, with some projects the last couple of days, so we just didn't have the time in the evening to do mm-hmm. the podcast. Yeah. Anyway. But it works out because we had, like, extra stuff that showed up, you know, That's news true. stories that we would have had to, you know, do a lot later, so it's a little bit fresher than... Than it would have normally been. That's true. We got some bonus stuff in. Yep. So today we're going to be talking about um, Halfway to Halloween mm-hmm. at Disney. Um, and we're also going to be talking about Disney bringing back their college program. And then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, we'll take a look at a real life lightsaber, kind of. And we'll also talk about Cara Dune possibly returning to the Star Wars universe. Probably not, but possibly. You never know. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Indeed. Then in our entertainment news, Woody Harrelson gives a helping hand, and Loki is arriving a little earlier than we thought. Mm -hmm. Then we'll finish up with our insightful picks of the week, and then we have a couple of upcoming events we're going to highlight at the end of the show. Uh, Before we do that, though, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get video versions of all of our shows, looking up Insights into Things, or you can get audio versions of this podcast, just looking up Insights into Entertainment, available on Google, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, any place you can find uh, podcasts these days. I would also invite folks to reach out, give us your feedback, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast on Instagram. We're at insights into things, or you can get us on our website and all those links on the website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Sure. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So yesterday, without realizing that it was, it seems that we were halfway to Halloween. So Disney uh, Parks had posted on their website a whole bunch of uh, different things uh, uh, to kind of welcome the the season. Uh, So one of it that they were uh, announced is that for the uh, holiday season, they aren't going to be doing the um, Not-So-Scary Halloween, Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween. They are doing a Disney After Part After Hours Boo Bash. Um, ticket prices haven't been announced yet, but it looks like it'll be an after hours party for three hours after, uh, normal park closing. Uh, it's going to be, uh, during select nights, uh, from August 10th through October 31st, uh, various, uh, Halloween snacks will be available. It does look like, 
Uh, they'll be doing some trick or treating areas where they'll you, you can go and pick up candy. This is the one time of the year where adults are allowed to wear costumes. Uh, masks are going to be required for this as well. Uh, not a whole lot of information, you know, uh, coming out. Uh, they're obviously going to be doing the character cavalcades because they're still not doing uh, the meet and greets with the characters yet. Um, but kind of, you know, something Halloween themed because last year they obviously didn't do, you know, anything, even though the park, uh, you know, had had opened up uh, by then last year. So kind of kind of cool. Um, so that was one of the things that that they announced. Um, then they also had a little um, shriek peek of upcoming merchandise that's going to be available uh, at the parks, but also Shop Disney. Uh, dot com will have them. They also had a Ghoulish Grooves music playlist um, that they uh, had put out. Uh, also tonight, as a matter of fact, they're going to be doing a live event on TikTok um, that will um, give you some behind the scenes look at the Haunted Mansion attraction at Walt Disney World with appearances from uh, Walt Disney Imagineers and a first look at an all new Haunted Mansion trend collection and appearances from some of our favorite friends from regions beyond. Uh, but one of the really cool things that kind of came out was a self-guided tour of the most mystifying attractions around the world which was hosted by Uncle Deadly from the Muppets, which is really funny because, like, everybody posted that nobody knew that that was what the character's name was. <laughs> Everyone knew who the character was, but they were like, oh, Uncle Deadly? Okay, that makes sense. But what's really awesome and came out, and everybody was talking about it yesterday, is that this fall on Disney+, Plus there is going to be a Muppets Haunted Mansion special that's going to be airing. Yay! Why? Why are you so excited about that? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you don't already know that I am a huge Haunted Mansion fan, then... Well, ever since we took your Haunted Mansion background down. That's there. true. Yeah, but there's, like, right there, there's Haunted Mansion stuff. So, anyway. So, yeah. So, that was kind of cool that that was the big, you know, buzz uh, floating around, you know, yesterday with that. So, very cool. So, the Halloween party that they're doing... Mm -hmm. Are they only doing that at Disney World or are they doing it at Disneyland? As, as well? of right now, they they just are talking about doing it at Disney Disney uh Disney World. And not that's at Disney. It's gonna be Magic Kingdom they're doing yes. that. Mm -hmm. Are they planning any kind of Halloween celebrations at any of the other parks in Disney World? Mm -mm. You know, it's gonna no. be kind of a Halloween light this year. Well, they whenever they did Halloween, it was usually only at the Magic Kingdom anyway. Well, I thought they did other stuff. They had like other costume characters at the other mm. No, not they usually. They didn't do any special fireworks or anything? Mm -mm. Maybe I was going to a different park. <laughs> mm. In your head. <laughs> uh, no no uh, parade with the Headless Horseman, though. Right. So they're going to have the little cavalcades that they've been doing, which is like the l parade light where you don't know what time right. it'll happen. So that would be kind of cool if you're just walking and all of a sudden, you know, the headless horseman comes by. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. But I know that, you know, for people that go to the Halloween party, one of the things that they look forward to is seeing the various different characters who you don't normally see right. throughout the park and you get your chance to, to meet and greet with them. Your so Jack Skellington. Right. Yeah. Right. And some of the other more obscure character so maybe this is a chance for them to now are they doing back. as many of these as they normally would the not so scaries it they didn't say how many they don't even have ticket prices yet either so Very i'm guessing probably but i'm guessing since it's august 10th through they're gonna october 31st get out of it Absolutely, because when Good we did Disney. it, well, when we did it, what it was September first, we right? It was right when the changeover happened, right? So, well, no, it was we. I think we went to like the first Halloween party, but it was like September first. 
But yeah, because we were in the park the day before the party. Right. Then we went to the party the next right, right, day, right. and they had switched the right, park. Right, but like over. now they're doing it in August, where you know September first still kind of felt. Oh, so they're so then they're really they're milking this. really really milking wow. it. Yeah, but then you know November first they're going to probably start with some sort of Christmas, Christmas stuff, yeah. stuff. So you know. Okay. So tell us about the Disney College program. So this was another um, positive thing that that came up uh, this week also, was that Disney had announced that the Disney College program would be returning to Walt Disney World in June of 2021. Uh, On their official website, they had said, you know, that as an industry and... Uh, you know, community continues to bounce back. We're going to be welcoming back thousands of cast members to work. And we're also going to start recruiting efforts, um, you know, at Walt Disney World, blah, 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 blah. And they were saying that uh, students who were already in the program, who ended up getting their program cut short, they were going to be receiving emails that they could reapply and they would kind of get the preferential treatment to come back as well as new students uh, could be invited uh, to, to apply as well. Uh, The program again, got cut short last year as of, you know, and unfortunately they really didn't have much warning because everything kind of shut down quickly. So as of March 18th of 2020, the program had stopped and not only was it the college program, but it was the, the culinary program, the cultural exchange program, and the Disney academic exchange program were all suspended. Um, so, you know, when the college program is is in full effect, they have almost uh, 5,500 cast members uh, that do various roles, um, you know, from attraction hosts to character performers uh, to culinary as well. So that's a huge, you know, chunk of employee uh, cast members coming back. Um, so they will also be uh, the first participants uh, to stay at the new Flamingo Crossings Village Complex, which was built to house the college uh, workforce as well. So good news for them. So explain those briefly what the college program is and and what you know about it. Sure. So I, I don't know a, a whole lot, but basically it's, uh, you know, you apply, you know, uh, sometimes it's through your college. Uh, so if you're going for, you know, hotel management or if you're going for culinary services, um, you know, various different majors, and it's basically your summer job where you. So it's an intern style is, program? Yeah. You know, I think uh, as far as I know, you do get paid. It's not free, um, you know, and but this is also where they get a lot of foreign exchange students uh, that will end up working at Epcot in, you know, right, various right countries uh that are represented in in world showcase um as well as other places you know throughout the park uh, you know as well um and sometimes they they work you know a couple of summers they might work like two two summers um you know but during their college you, you need to apply to it and be approved from right. disney and then you come and live on disney and you property. come and live on disney property and you know if it's something where you already have housing that you don't have to worry about it but disney does provide um you know kind of like a dorm style uh atmosphere for for that and this is a new community uh the flamingos crossing village is, was a new uh setup that they they just built cool. so very cool that was all we had for our disney detective mm-hmm. we'll be back in a minute with our tales from the edge of the galaxy seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events, 
such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Pew, 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 pew. So this Tuesday, if you didn't know, was May the 4th. So it was... So what does that mean? It was just some day. (laughs) It was Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday, right. (laughs) (laughs) So, of course... You know, it, it's May the 4th has become like International Star Wars Day, you know, over the past uh, couple of years. Um, and one of the really cool news items that, that came out was Disney's real life lightsaber um, and how it looks. So it popped up all over the place. Uh, there were all these little teasers. Yeah, that. <laughs> that uh so there were all these uh little teasers that popped up and actually what the teasers really were for was for the star wars themed hotel and it just so happened that with the teaser for the hotel it was um a a character uh dressed like ray and she had a, a lightsaber that it you know the the, the blade extended and it was like, what? Um, but what was, you know, and this was something that actually a bunch of uh, reporters had actually already seen back in April. Uh, there had been a news conference um, that unfortunately there had been no video about uh, the uh, there was no video from the uh, the event. But during the event, uh, I think it was the um, uh, Walt Disney president, Walt Disney Parks president had shown the lightsaber and everybody was like, what? And he was like, yeah, this is real. So it wasn't until this video that came out on Star Wars Day actually got to to show the video. Um, So we've known for a while that Disney was working on some sort of real type of lightsaber um and obviously there were uh was patent information that came out but this was the first time that we got to see it but again most of the video was talking about um the star wars galactic star cruiser hotel which is going to be opening up in 2022 which is featuring a two-day two-night story living adventure where guests are transported um aboard the uh halion Halcyon, 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 a uh, star cruiser, and one of the things is a lightsaber training. So, as of right now, as far as we know, you can't buy the lightsaber. It's just a prop that they're using as as part of the show. Um, but what was really cool was just the fact that you could see it, and and in the one uh, in this article, which was from CNET. Uh, the one uh, the journalist talks about, you know, how she thinks the lightsaber was was made and, and kind of goes through and, and she kind of makes her own um, <laughs> with a lot of tape. <laughs> it's actually kind of cute, um, but it, it's a, an interesting concept because uh, it, it's kind of the idea of a um, tape measure. That it you know extends that way and and retracts that way, um, and obviously lights up with LED lights and 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 whatnot, um, but looks really cool. So obviously lots of people have been watching it over and over, and everybody's like, when can I buy one? But again, as of right now, there's there's no word as to if it's something that's even going to be available for consumers to to purchase. And given the sensitive nature of this and how much money Disney has invested in it with the patent and everything, it's highly unlikely they're going to be selling this or putting it in the hands of average consumers anytime <laughs> yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But, you know, you can still go and do your uh, Savi's workshop right. and build your own lightsaber there when you're at uh, Galaxy's Edge. Well, and I could also see, too, because if you remember years and years ago when uh, Disney had redone a bunch of stuff at the Haunted Mansion, they had gotten the special patents for the flickering lights. Right, right. And over the years, other companies have you know, kind of mass produced very similar versions of it. And now you can purchase it. So I could see maybe in like five years, a, a it'll, different... it'll take a little while before somebody can rip it off, but somebody will definitely rip it off. Right. So there'll be another version of, you know, the lightsaber coming and, you know, right. I'm sure. So give it, give it like five the years. Second or so. coming of the lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, you don't have enough already. Exactly. <laughs> There's always more to have. Exactly. So tell us about the possibility of someone coming back to Star Wars. Yeah, so there it seems there's a whole bunch of different rumors that have popped up um, about Mandalorian star Gina Carano reportedly in talks to return to the Disney Plus, you know, series. So could she be returning after Lucasfilm fired her in February, where they had also said there were no plans for her to be employed by the studio in the future over several controversial uh, social media posts that she had made. Well, now it seems uh, multiple entertainment news blogs and websites has reported that Carano and Disney have reached an agreement that will bring her back to the Mandalorian and the Star Wars franchise. Um, so where do these rumors come from? Well, our good friend YouTuber Overlord DVD <laughs> uh, started the rumor saying that he had heard from two Hollywood agents who said Disney was in talks uh, with Carano about returning as Cara Dune in the Star Wars franchise. And then uh, another website that uh, per um, another website, we got this covered uh, overlord DVD goes on to make it clear that, you know, he backs Carano in this manner, defending her posts, you know, that, that cost her, her career and, um, you know, so, so far, you know, nobody really knows much of anything, but like everybody has heard all these various rumors. Um, the person that wrote this article had reached out to Disney Plus for comment and hadn't heard from anything uh, f from any anyone on it. Um, but what was interesting was one of the things that had happened was when she had gotten fired um, from Lucasfilms, her episode of running wild with Bear Grylls had gotten pulled. Well, it seems since the article came out, she, uh, she had posted on Twitter saying, want to hear something cool? Just so happens you will be able to see my Bear Grylls episode on Nat Geo. After all, Bear is a, is a real one. I'm so glad you're going to get to see it. My heart is so full. So now it kind of makes you wonder, hmm... Or were they just being nice and like, oh, we had this extra episode. Let's let's play it. Well, and when's Disney nice? You know, <laughs> this, the only time Disney is nice is when there's just something in it for Disney. Yeah. Um, and you know, to be honest with you, in a way, I'm I kind of would like to see the character come back because I right. think it was a great character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, everyone is entitled to their opinion, even if they're wrong. Mm -hmm. So you know. The, the thing is, is that you can almost guarantee that when she signed a contract with Disney, right. that there were certain clauses in the contract. There's mm -hmm. a non-disparagement clause and there's a usually some form of morality clause and stuff like that. So things are spelled out in these contracts so that you don't make your employer look bad right. by what how you conduct yourself in the public image because they're projecting you into the public. Mm-hmm. And if you get out there in the public, you're representing the company. And and Disney does not want to have their reputation tarnished, despite all the child stars that Disney has produced that has done nothing but tarnish their, their reputation as a family-friendly organization. Well, yeah. Um, so there's certain rules that you're expected to play mm -hmm. by. And if you choose to not play by those rules, then you can't be employed by Disney. And that's really what this came down to. It wasn't... Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, Disney's infringing on, on Gina Carano's right to, to free speech. 
Well, no, they're not because she signed a contract that said she wouldn't do certain things. And when you do things you said you weren't going to do in your contract, you're in violation of your contract. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, So, you know, she's welcome to have those opinions, but Disney doesn't want her expressing those opinions as a representative of their company. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't do that, you're fine. Right, right. Um, The character itself, she played a fantastic role in the universe. I think the character had a lot of strong points. The character, and and I think this is probably where my my I take my issue with is that the character itself was a role model for young girls out there, and when you do that, that role model image is transferred to the actor or actress in mm-hmm. this case, and when that person doesn't live up to what that role model is in their public life, then right. you're shattering that role model image for mm-hmm. those those young kids right and and that's really where i take exception with it so play by the rules you know i i I hate to say it this way but keep your mouth shut right and and do your job right and and that's the thing and as we've mentioned numerous times there are so many celebrities that we don't know what their political affiliation is because they never talk about it that's just not what they do. Obviously, there are many who are very uh, vocal about where they stand on on any side of, of the issue. But, you know, well, and, and they... I don't want my entertainers to be political. I want my entertainers to entertain me. Right, and that's where... I watch TV and movies and go to concerts and go to plays and do all these other things mm-hmm. so I can escape all this reality, all right. this... All this stuff that I have to deal with. Right. The last thing I want is for people like, you know, Bruce Springsteen doing political speeches on mm-hmm. stage at his shows. Or mm-hmm. who is the other guy that just got COVID? Ted Nugent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not paying to go to a political rally. I'm paying for you right. to entertain me. So yeah, just shut it. up and entertain me. Right. It's that simple. And that's the thing is that if she had, you know, not said anything and just... Not yep. posted anything, and if it was something where she felt the need to say something to a group of friends, she probably would have never been fired. Right. It would have been fine, and we wouldn't be going back and forth week after week. Is she hired? Is she not? Is she right. hired? Is she not? And, and this you know. is a life lesson about social media. Mm-hmm. Social media is a cesspool. Mm-hmm. If you post something on social media, even on social media sites where it's up there temporarily on there, Mm -hmm. it's going to be on the internet forever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understand that. Right. So whatever you do, make sure that you're doing it knowing that everybody's going to see it. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be up there and everyone's going to hold it over your head for the rest of your life. Right. If you're not willing to accept those consequences, then you shouldn't be on social media. And, and you see that happen time and time again with, you know, celebrities who posted something 10 years ago. And now they feel differently about it, but yet people, you know, trolls are the first ones to find, well, you said this, yep. and half the time they're like, we don't even remember saying it. Any kind of public yeah. official, you're Absolutely. susceptible to mm-hmm. that. So Absolutely. Don't do it. It's, yeah. it's literally, it's that simple. I mean, you mm-hmm. can't explain it any simpler yeah. than that. So that's all we had for our uh, Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. We'll be mm-hmm. right back with our Entertainment News of the Week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com.
go for entertainment news. Dum, 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 dum. Uh, so this was a, a cute story that had popped up. So uh, a Wall Street Journal reporter and her boyfriend, who happens to be a music producer, uh, a music producer and audio engineer, happened to be moving their stuff out of their New York City apartment over the weekend. And they got some very random help from a very famous Woody Harrelson. So last Saturday... Um, she had posted a photo of her and the Zombieland star holding a house plant and smiling uh, for the camera on Twitter with the caption that kind of went viral. And it said, Woody Harrelson helped us move out of our apartment today. Love you, NYC. Um, and then uh, they had uh, told the uh, 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 an article later on, um, you know, that they were just thinking like, gee, this would only happen in New York. Um, you know, so what they were saying was, you know, they didn't want to actually burden him with helping, but he was the one that actually offered to to help. Uh, and it was just one of those chance things that kind of happened right place at the right time. Um, so what was happening was they were loading uh up a U-Haul that they had just at the exact moment that Harrelson was on the hunt for a city bike station. Um, and he actually stopped the couple and asked if he knew where the closest one was. Um, and they said that he, you know, kind of gave off total dad vibes and basically he insisted on helping the move. Um, so it was just really sweet that, uh, you know, they were loading up the, the U-Haul and, and he's helping, you know, to, to carry the, the plant. And he even made a comment about the one plant kind of looking like it, you know, needed to be watered a little bit more. Uh, and she's like, yes, I know that it's basically dying. Um, you know, and yes, I know, you know, he, he told me it needed more water too. Um, the boyfriend uh, said that, you know, after he helped, uh, he resumed his search for, you know, the city bike. Um, and then uh, later, the, the couple did say that, um, you know, everything made it to the new home except for the plant. <laughs> they, they actually did leave the pathetic plant uh, on the side of the road. Uh, and he, <laughs> they said, we left it on a street and hopefully for a better home. And she goes, I have some fantasy in my head that Woody came back for it later on and saved it since he was so concerned. So it was a cute little... Uh, story that's, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah only only in new york yeah only sure. in new york you know like hey you need some help and it turns out to be woody harrelson like well that was like the story a few weeks ago when uh billy joel was driving around and he saw the piano out right the, right yeah that was a couple of months ago where yeah. the piano was there and he's like oh let's see how this Came works over, and, and, and just started bars. yeah playing oh yeah yeah only in new york one, one of the advantages i guess of living in new york yeah yeah so tell us about Loki. Yeah, so this was a story that that uh, that you had shared uh, with me. So it came from e uh, eonline .com, and it seems that the god of mischief is at it again. So on Wednesday, um, Disney Plus had revealed that their highly anticipated Loki series will be arriving sooner than planned, as a new teaser, uh, which they uh, had released, um, that originally. It was supposed to be starting to air on June 11th, but now it's going to be airing on Wednesday, June 9th. Um, so it was really kind of cute because they had uh, Tom Hiddleston uh, break the um, do the, the announcement where he's like, hey, it's me. It's Tom. Um, you know, look, sorry to interrupt, uh, you know, but we've been seeing these long superhero montages and Loki kind of tends to get, you know, left out. Um, so I could go on, but, you know, maybe let me just tell you that, you know, Wednesdays are now the new Fridays because obviously we know Fridays has been when all the, the Disney plus shows have been premiering. So now it seems they're going to be starting on, on Wednesday. So this was a, a cute little video because of course, just, uh, a couple days before, we had the new Marvel trailer that came out, kind of getting everybody ready for the new movies uh, that will be launching, um, you know, later this year and, um, you know, into next year and the following year. So this was kind of a, a cute little, you know, teaser after that of, hey, guess what? Loki's coming uh, a little early, too. So 
Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays are going to screw up our podcasting <laughs> now again. Well, no, you guys do your podcast, and then after you guys are done with your podcast, then we can watch Loki. Well, that makes for a late evening then, doesn't it? Why? We then, do TV time at 8 o'clock. Well, that's going to cut into your TV well, time. Well, TV time will now be family TV time. That's true. That is true. Dude, it's Loki. <laughs> I guess we'll have to just make it work, right? <laughs> If it's important, you make the time. Exactly. And your daughter was very excited after seeing the extended trailer of Loki. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, mommy was really excited about Loki, too, but that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so that's all we have for our <laughs> entertainment news. We'll be right back with our insightful picks. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick was one I was waiting for you to talk about and you never got around to it so i stole it <laughs> why not <laughs> since you always steal mine um so this was a mockumentary uh that came out actually at the end of uh 2020 and it was on netflix or it still is on netflix called death to 2020 um and it's uh by the it's actually a very comedic retrospect from the creators of Black Mirror. Um, so Death to 2020 was a 2020 British mockumentary um, where it featured a series of fictional characters discussing uh, U.S. and U.K. events of 2020, including the COVID pandemic, the presidential election, um, uh, the, the drama with the um, the royal family and, and other various events. And it was just hysterical. Uh, it was very well done. Um, you know, the, the cast of characters were, were hysterical. Um, you know, you had the, your typical Karens and then you had, uh, you know, the conspiracy theorists and then you had, uh, the queen as one of the characters and all of these, uh, tech people and, and these, uh, doctors and stuff. And it was just really well done. It was, you know, if you needed a good laugh about what 2020 was, this was, this was definitely it. I know you, you were crying, uh, a lot of the time. <laughs> while we were while we were going through this um so again it's you know it's it's may um so if you you know maybe forgot <laughs> a lot of what uh 2020 was uh you know it's a good thing to kind of uh go back and and watch and and what's kind of funny is at the end of the documentary they have various uh characters kind of give a tagline to what they predict 2021 is going to be like um you know and of course they make it out to to be a lot worse than than what it is but it, it was it was a good time to to kind of sit back and and laugh about you know the year okay good pick thank you i know because i was going to use it right <laughs> and you never did so right. <laughs> i got it So my pick this week, before it gets stolen from from right underneath of me, is a documentary <laughs> called Under the Boardwalk, The Monopoly Story, available on Amazon Prime. Under the Boardwalk, The Monopoly Story is actually a 2010 documentary presenting a series of stories about the board game of Monopoly and those who play it. The film was narrated by Zachary Levy and directed by Ken, uh, Kevin Testato. The film premiered at the 2010 Anaheim International Film Festival. Under the Boardwalk depicts the Monopoly National and World Championships that are held around the world every four years like the Olympics. Mm, interesting. Uh, leading up to the crowning of a new champion at the World Championship in Las Vegas, the filmmakers follow some of the players in the game who compete for cash prizes that go well above your $200 for pass and go. The addition, in addition to the coverage of the competition and the competitors, the film also delves into the quirky history of the game itself. With its origins as, as a uh, protest simulation against the pitfalls of capitalism to its evolution into the wish-fulfilling for fantasy of being a financial high roller during the Great Depression, the film tells the story of the game in great detail while exploring the passion and dedication of those who play it competitively. 
Whether it's the tremendous pop culture influence the game has had, or the various idiosyncrasies that have grown around it, you're sure to find something about the game you probably never knew. And they go into statistics on what pieces are the most popular. They have one uh, person who's a statistician who went out and calculated the frequency you're going to land on each of the pieces, hmm. what what uh, board pieces are best to buy to win, and lo and behold, it's not board. Right, I was going to say it's it's usually never those, even though those are the ones that everybody always tries to right, get. Right, right. What's what's really interesting is they go into a lot of the strategies of playing. Okay, it, of, okay. Are you going to uh, buy first? Are you going to when do you go to jail and and everything else? And they, they have you know they take you through this one competitor and he's got like four coaches with him. <laughs> And <laughs> and crazy. like they play game after game, they'll, they'll play, sit down and play 15 games at a shot just to test out different strategies wow. and to read different players. I mean, it's almost okay. like, like uh, a poker a game poker tournament. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, so it's, it's crazy. Some of the stuff huh. that they wind up doing here, but they take you back and they show you the, the history of it and how the game came about and the fact that it had its origins in about three or four other games. And, mm -hmm. you know, it took 30 years in this, this roundabout trip to actually become the game monopoly eventually. Hmm. So it was a very interesting game, especially, you know, since it's something that I think just about everybody in America, most people in the right. world are familiar with the game itself. Right. Just kind of pull the curtain back a little bit and see what's behind the scenes was neat. So that is, I scrolled up again here. That is <laughs> Under the Boardwalk, the Monopoly story on Amazon Prime. And Very we'll be cool. Right back with some upcoming events. What do you got? So things are starting to kind of uh, open up, I guess, as we. Uh, have been seeing so one of the yearly events that we always like to attend that wasn't going on last year but will be going on this year is the new jersey renaissance fair which uh it's only for two weekends uh it's may 29th and 30th and june 5th and 6th um and the website is njrenfair.com uh, they had posted that we were thrilled to announce the good news that the New Jersey Renaissance Fair is on for 2021. We're looking forward to celebrating our 11th season with you. Um, one of the things is you do need to purchase tickets in advance. Normally you could purchase them adva in advance or you could purchase them at the gate. Now you have to purchase them uh, beforehand and masks are required in all areas of the property unless you are eating or drinking and you have to uh, stay still while you're eating or drinking and obviously maintain a distance of six feet from anyone that's not from your household. Um, they're going to have extra uh, hand washing and sanitizing stations uh, as well. And they are also limiting the event to 50% capacity uh, per day. So again, uh, once tickets have sold out for a day, that's it. No more and no guests that day. Uh, tickets are $25 for adults and for children five to 12, it is $10. So that's one of the events that we're looking forward to doing. And another um, where they had already posted the dates, but it was kind of like a tentative uh, date, was for RetroCon. RetroCon. Which is uh, September 25th and 26th, and that's done at the uh, Pennsylvania Convention Center in Oaks. Um, they had announced earlier this week that, um, you know, basically they had said that with Pennsylvania lifting a lot of the, the COVID restrictions as of Memorial Day, we feel comfortable to shift our show's promotion into, you know, the next gear. Uh, weekend tickets for RetroCon are now available for purchase and you can reserve your tickets, um, and basically, the only ticket that you can buy online for them is a ticket for the full weekend. They are going to be selling tickets at the door uh, for this. Um, so Saturday uh, tickets are 
$20. On Sunday, they are $15. Kids 12 and under get in free with any paying adult. And then again, paying, uh, buying a ticket online is $26 for both days. Um, so that's something, uh, you know, as it gets a little bit closer, they'll be announcing guests. They usually have, you know, like 10 celebrities that show up. Usually, you know, not very big celebrities that you would see at like, you know, wizards or. Well, we did get to sit in on the one panel with yeah, uh, Dwight true. Schultz and, uh, um, Benedict. Benedict, uh, no. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. Yeah. From the A team. The guys yeah. from the A team. <laughs> Yeah, I feel bad about that now. <laughs> yeah, don't you? You're going to have to. Dirk Benedict. See? There Dirk, you go. Dirk Benedict. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. I keep thinking Templeton Peck, but no, that's who he played. <laughs> right, right. So there's usually, you know, a, a couple of different, uh, you know, celebrities that show up. And it's it's a, a great one to go to if you're looking for old yeah. uh, collectible yeah. toys. Some um, uh, retro uh, gaming going on there usually. You got some arcade games going right. on. Right. And it's usually pretty spaced out. Yeah. It's it's not well, one of the. Because that Echo Center is huge. Right. So, so I'm sure they're going to do even more to make it, you know, spaced out. But also by September, maybe things will be, you know, in a, in a better situation. One could hope. One could hope. So, you know, awesome. again, nice to have something not virtual. Yep gonna you know be available so, so. the jersey renaissance fair and retro mm -hmm. awesome i think that's all we had for the show today yep before we go i do want to invite folks to subscribe to the podcast again uh video versions are available under insights into things audio is available as insights into entertainment we're available on apple Podcasts, spotify google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, pretty much any place you can get a podcast. I really need to stop going down that list. Right. Uh, we also invite you to contact us. Tell us how we're doing. Give us suggestions. Uh, tell us to stop talking about things. Tell me to stop ranting about things. You can Rant about more things. Who knows? There you go. That, you never that's know. always an option, too. Right. Uh, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We're at Facebook on facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can find us on Instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things. You can find audio versions of the podcast under podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com backslash insights into things. We Twitch. I mean, we stream six days, five <laughs> days Twitch. a week on Twitch. You got Twitch, at, what? At twitch.tv slash insights into things. And you can find links to everything on our main website, insightsintothings.com. That's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.